Hey everybody, Nidoo really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki Kyoto Wins. Still trotting down the common route. At the moment we were just patrolling out here with the guys. So let's get back to it. Yeah, two of us, two patrols met up and we're just having a short conversation in the middle. So you can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Something had really gotten into him. I glanced at Okita to see if he noticed anything. <coughs> Okita, are you alright? I'm fine. I think I just caught a cold or something. Ah, I see. Well, please take care of yourself. I have medicine to treat colds, so I'll give you some when we return. Oh, yeah? Thanks. Well, I guess having you around comes in handy at times. Only at times? Come on, how much cleaning do I do around here? Hmm? What's the matter? Okita's eyes looked past me and suddenly something caught his attention off to the side. Whoa, whoa! What do you mean, no? Stop it! Let go of me! We are patriots, fighting every day to kick those damn foreigners out of our country. You owe us a little booze. Or maybe even... <laughs> a little... company? Across the street, a clump of perhaps three or four men were harassing a young girl. Okita! Heisuke! I see them. Stay here. But it appeared that Okita got to them first. Well, well. I guess patriots aren't what they used to be, with men like you throwing the title around. The usual crowd shuffled away from Okita and the men as quickly as they could. No one wanted to be near the sight of unsheathed blades. The ronin's eyes found Okita's jacket, and the men stiffened. Y you're one of those Shinsugumi fellas, ain't you? Ah, you must be the brains. So, tell me, Chief, what's it gonna be? His lips curled into a predatory smile as his hand gripped his sword. There was no mirth in that rictus grin, and the ronin's face grew much paler. Their moods were not totally deflated yet, as their ringleader made one more attempt. You fool. God damn it, get out of here, you brown nosing son of a bitch. Shut up! If you really want to live, maybe you should follow your own advice. The sight of two Shinsengumi blue jackets standing shoulder to shoulder was enough to deter the men. Screw you guys. The last of the color drained from their faces, and they turned tail and ran. Ugh, if they're going to just run away at the sight of us, then they never should have picked a fight with us in the first place. Um, you weren't going to go after them? Arrest them? And charge them with what crime, exactly? Didn't figure you for the Iron Fist sort. Uh, I didn't really mean it like that. Um, thank you for saving me. My name is Kaoru Nagumo. I watched as the girl gave Okita a quick bow. She was so refined, so ladylike. Even dressed like a girl, I doubt I could ever be as elegant as her. Ah, oh, you underestimate yourself, Chizuru. I'd only just begun to feel sorry for myself when suddenly I felt a hand on my arm. Whoa! Uh Okita? Calm down, kid. Come here and stand next to her. Um... He shoved me next to the girl we just rescued, then stepped back to stroke his chin thoughtfully. Uh, um, Okita? I glanced nervously toward the girl and attempted to smell kindly under the circumstances. The smell she gave me in return was beautiful, but there was something about it that seemed... odd. She... seems familiar. Like when you look in the mirror? Just as I thought. We look just like each other. We look alike? That's when I finally realized. She was identical to whom I saw in the mirror. <laughs> Maybe they just didn't have very many mirrors. Really? I don't think they look alike at all. Well, there's something wrong with your eyes, Toto. No, no, no. They're practically identical. Dress the kid up like a girl, and you wouldn't be able to tell them apart. Gokita, she seems troubled. Oh, um, I had to say something, but what? Perhaps she saw through my confusion, or perhaps it was something else. I wish to thank you properly, but I'm afraid you've caught me in the middle of an important errand, which I must attend to. Please forgive my rudeness. I hope I'll be able to repay you soon, Okita of the Shinsengumi. With that, the girl who called herself Kaoru disappeared into the crowds of Kyoto, although the uneasiness created by her presence remained. Hey, hey, hey! 
Looks like she's got the hots for you, Soji. Huh. Oh, Hisuke. Is that really what you think? You've got a long way to go before you're at Sano's level. What? What the hell is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I don't think he'd ever get there, really. Their back and forth continued, but my mind was elsewhere. Last night's rain left a number of puddles on the road, and when I looked into them, I saw a strange girl who looked just like me. Calder, huh? Wind caught the surface of the puddle, sending a flurry of ripples across it. Come on, let's get moving. All right, I'm coming. I turned and ran toward Heisuke and Okita, already on their way back to headquarters. The temple was much larger than the compound in Mibu, as advertised. The whole Shinsengumi could gather in the common room with space to spare. As Kondo spoke, his voice echoed grandly throughout the hall. Standing before Kondo were the many proud men under his leadership, with glowing expressions. By now, I imagine you have all heard that Iemochi Tokugawa, the 14th Shogun of the Tokugawa Shogunate, will be visiting our city of Kyoto. The Shinsengumi have been asked to guard him as he passes through the city on his way to Nijo Castle. What? The Shinsengumi guards the Shogun? Well, that's one big promotion. Heh, <laughs> too hard for him to ignore us after Ikeda and Hamaguri, huh? Our work's finally paying off. Guess you could say the fate of the country will be resting on our swords, huh? That's exactly it. You guys better be ready for it. Guarding the Shogun, that is one big role. Indeed, if only Sonim was alive, he would have been so happy. How truly dreadful to have lost such an ally. Ito wiped crocodile tears away from his eyes with a silk handkerchief. Yeah, he ain't fooling no one. Ito and his followers were told Sanin died. The entire incident surrounding his transformation had been covered up. Only a few of the men of the Shinsengumi knew the truth. Oh, Ito. I think performing the job given to us by the Shogun is what Sanin would have wanted. Yes, I understand. This is an excellent opportunity for us to thrust our name into the forefront of the masses. Things are going to get pretty hectic soon. We ought to get our assignments hashed out. To begin, I'd like Toshi, Soji, and myself to... Sorry, Kondo, but you think maybe Soji can sit this one out? Hmm? Why's that? Supposedly, his cold hasn't recovered. I've repeatedly told him to take care of himself. What? Soji, is this true? Are you alright? Lending him is just being a mother hen, sir. I think I'm fine. Don't give me that crap. You just about coughed up a lung earlier. Well, is that your excuse to sell me some meds? No matter what, I won't buy Ishida medicinal powder. That's not what I'm trying to do. Just shut up and follow my orders. I gave Okita some pretty strong medicine not too long ago. I wonder if that didn't work. Or maybe he doesn't have a cold, but rather he's inhaling dust from the lack of cleaning here. Then suddenly, someone raised his hand. What's the matter, Heisuke? Something on your mind? Uh, um, Kondo. I'm not feeling so great either. You too, Heisuke. You better take care of yourself. This is our time to shine. I was hoping to have all of us there to greet the Shogun. Yeah, sorry. Oh, no, no. Your health comes first, always. I'm sure you'll have another chance. I just have to make sure you get to do something spectacular. Oh, he's always so happy and so sweet. Kondo and Hijikata continued to discuss their formation, but... Suddenly, Hijikata turned to me. Alright, what are you going to do? Um, what? Don't give me that. I'm asking you for coming with us or not. I... I can go too? Of course. We certainly won't mind. After all, you're practically one of us. If you want, I'd love to have you come. Could I? Can I really go? I hesitated for a moment, confused, and Okita laughed. Oh, I don't you go. It doesn't seem too dangerous either. Yeah, the Choshu domain can't come in or out of Kyoto, so I'm sure there'll be no fights. What should I do? I'm just a little concerned about a person like me who's not a warrior coming along, but... I was feeling emotionally strained with no leads of my father turning up on rounds. I'll go! Oh, I don't get to choose. All right, then. I figured we'd put you in charge of running errands as a messenger. 
I'm using the hell out of you, so brace yourself. I'll put on my running sandals. In the earlier days of the Tokugawa Shogunate, Nijo Castle was a place for the Shogun to stay on his way to the capital. It's been a while since the Shogun actually stayed in it, though. We'd met the Shogun on the road and begun our escort about 30 minutes earlier and arrived at the castle relatively recently. By now, I imagine, Kondo, Nagakura, Inoue, and the men were greeting the officials and other important people in the Shogun's retinue. Well, I've got a job to do, too. It was my job to tell soldiers when to change shifts and to carry messages back and forth. A glorified errand girl, in other words. I don't see myself as being useless, though, I think. Um, I've come with a message. Ah, <sighs> look at him! I'm so happy to deliver you a message. If you just keep looking like that. What? You are the messenger. This isn't the playground, you know. Well, I'm not here to play. Huh, <laughs> is that so? Then, what could someone like you who can't even use a sword do for anyone? I've come here to do what I can do. Would you mind if we stop playing games? Just take my message. Speak. The chief is currently going around, paying his respects to the people of the castle. Everyone else continue with the guard. Message received. Huh? That's it? Is that simple? What's up with your dumb face? Surprised I listened to your message. Oh, well, no, I just... A job is a job. I don't plan on making it personal. All right. You've delivered your message. Get out of here. Uh, okay. Miki and I never really got on the best of terms, but maybe he's a responsible person. After he shooed me away, I continued attending to my duties as a messenger. In the surroundings of Nijo Castle, I could see the warriors wearing a white uniform, which was different from the afternoon uniform. They don't seem too nervous, but I guess it makes sense. Some of the Imperial Nationalist extremists were driven out of Kyoto, and many warriors fled. There's no way anything would hap- Oh dear. Ah! Spoke too soon. A sudden chill ran down the length of my spine. I froze. Ah! I knew the feeling. A length of cold steel, seeking entry into your flesh, eyes shining with a lust for blood and violence. Since I'd begun living with the Shinsengumi, I felt it more than once. Bloodlust. My eyes were drawn to the roof, where no one would think to look. A large wall cast a shadow, shielding a section of the roof from the moonlight. There they stood. Three of my favorite guys in the Hakuoki world. You! Uh, that's wrong, I shouldn't have even met him yet in this route. So, you noticed us. Not too slow, then. They looked very distinctive, unlike any soldiers I've seen before, but three sets of piercing eyes scattered my thoughts, making it hard to think. I had recognized them. Now I had to put names to faces. Chikage Kazuma Kyuju Amagiri Kyo Shiranoi they were connected to both the Satsuma and the Choshu, and they'd made an effort to impede the Shinsengumi at Ikeda, and again at Hamaguri. Why are you here? You mean, how did we get here, right? Well, the answer's simple. Man-made obstacles like these are crap to a demon. We are here for a specific purpose. That purpose is you, Chizaru Yukimura. We are here for you. What? My heart was pounding so hard it could burst. Man, mine would be too. Three hot guys like this, showing up for me? Why did these men know my name? I... I don't understand. A demon? What do you mean? And what are you here for? N no you must be joking! How can you ask what a demon is? Perhaps you are the one joking here. He stepped forward, cloaked in shadows. When Amagiri spoke, it was calm and peaceful as if he were reasoning with a frightened child. Do your injuries heal quickly? Uh, I held my breath. Do you heal from injuries faster than any human could? How does he know my secret? I've never revealed it to anyone before. Well, I... 
Words struggled to come to mind, and just as I was about to deny their accusations. What the hell? Maybe it'll be quicker if we just give her a demonstration. Shiranoi's gun glistened eerily. <laughs> Shiranoi, do you really intend on injuring such a rare female demon? Hey, don't tell me what to do. That kid's being stubborn, so what can I do? After Kazuma glared at Shiranoi, his eyes drifted toward the Kodachi on my hip again. You don't need words. Her family name is a demon's, and she carries the demon of the East Kodachi. That is enough proof. My family name? What's wrong with Yukimura? I didn't understand what he was saying, and the cold sweat started inching down my spine. And then again, it isn't as though we need your permission to kidnap you. Yeah, it's kind of against the definition of kidnapping. Female demons are rare. Now come with me. His hand stretched out from the darkness, pale and grasping, like the tentacle of some hideous subterranean monster. Then a blade flickered through the night. How dare you interrupt! Battle stances together look awesome! Whoa there, pal. Trying to pick up chicks in a back alley. That's not creepy at all. You again. The culture and the noise of a dog, I see. One could say the same of you. Harada! Saito! My legs almost collapsed, as if the now shattered tension was the only thing keeping me standing. I teetered backwards, my balance momentarily lost. A strong, sinewy hand caught me and pulled me back, its grip hard as steel. Stay back. Everybody's here! Hijikata! One hand guided me around behind him, even as the other drew his sword. I figured you were here for the Shogun's head. What do you want from a kid? I have a little interest in you or the Shogun right now. The matter at hand concerns only us demons. Demons. His eyes narrowed. Hijikata seemed perplexed by Kazuma's statement, as if contemplating the possibility of its truth. Huh. Haven't seen these punks since Hamaguri. Well, I guess we're faded, huh? Doesn't make me particularly happy. True, though I feel little at this reunion. So you were going to be in our way, then? The tension was so thick in the air that I could scarcely breathe. They were a powder keg ready to explode. Even the slightest movement could set them off. It wasn't like I could do much. But still, I wanted to help them, so I grabbed my sword. Don't worry about the commander and the captains. Y Yamazaki, when did you... Because he knows how to be a real ninja, unlike us. I've been ordered to return you to headquarters. Then, you're telling me to run away? Exactly. Even if you were here, there would be nothing you could do. Uh, I mean, he may be right, but... I will... Go back to headquarters, like a good girl. And Sanin's probably there. Even as I ran back to the headquarters with Yamazaki... I couldn't shake the fear in my heart. When I finally got to the compounds, I still felt nervous, and I could do nothing but stare into the blank darkness behind me. <sighs> You're fine now. I'm sure they can't follow you here. I wouldn't be so sure. Uh, but... But... I feel really bad saying this when you're worried, but I must return to the commander. Oh, who's gonna guard me? If everyone is out to protect the Shogun, that most of the warriors aren't going to be here. I think it's most safe for you to be with Okita or Toto. Okay, understood. Well, I'll leave the rest to you. With that, he disappeared back into the darkness. <sighs> Suddenly, the night felt very quiet. The word demon echoed through my head, and their faces floated in front of my eyes. I shook my head. As the temple came back into focus, I felt very, very alone. As Yamazaki said, I should go find Okita or Heisuke. But whom should I look for? I have to go for Heisuke. Hello, Okita's more fun. The night compounds that I'm so used to felt like a place I don't know. Nearly all the members of the Shinsengumi left to guard the Shogun, which meant the compound was still cold and oddly silent. So when I spotted Heisuke, I was quite relieved. Heisuke! Huh? Chizuru, you don't look very sick, do you, Heisuke? What are you doing here all alone? Did you guys already finish with the Shogun? Um, actually...
Actually, I didn't know where to start. Stumbling over my words more often than not, I poured out the whole story. At the mention of Amagiri, the man who'd wounded Heisuke at Ikeda, he scowled. That guy came to Nijo Castle, and not only that, they came for you? Yeah. Are you sure they weren't mistaken? Maybe they mixed you up with someone else. I don't think so. I don't know how, but they knew my name. I see. That's kind of creepy. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. But it's all right now, so don't worry. Thanks. But wait. I thought you didn't feel well. Shouldn't you be resting inside? Or better yet, I'll prepare some medicine. Oh, about that. Um, actually, the truth is, I'm fine. I lied. What? Why? He looked at me for a moment, then shook his head in defeat. Everybody needs a sick day once in a while. I didn't want to leave to guard the Shogun. What do you mean you didn't want to go? Why? Heisuke seemed to be unsure whether to open up, and he looked up at the night sky for a moment. Eventually, he slowly but quietly continued speaking. Well, Kondo, Hijikata, the Shogunate, they all respect Iemochi very much. But I just can't get myself to feel the same way. What do you mean by that? I was in disbelief that he would admit such a thing, so I had to ask. I don't think you know since you haven't been back to Edo lately, but... In Edo, you can see foreigners building all these towers, setting up shop like they own the place. But it seems like the officials of the Shogunate don't think anything of that. Does he really plan on expelling the foreigners? It's starting to make me feel like he has no interest in protecting the civilians of Edo. So, under these circumstances, here comes the Shogun. It left a bad taste in my mouth. Uh. Besides, you heard about it, right? About that serum. My heart pounded. I did. That was all orders given by the Shogunate. Kondo believed that if we worked hard and showed some results, someday the Shogunate would approve our efforts, but... I can't shake the feeling knowing there's a high chance they'll just use us and then throw us away. Heisuke. Oh, don't get me wrong, though. I'm not saying that I have an issue with how Kondo and Hijikara are running things. I mean, I really do like them and respect them, enough that I've moved all the way to Kyoto with them. Heisuke's eyes were filled with confusion and pain, and it hurt my heart seeing them. To be in the predicament of not knowing what's right or wrong, and how to confront being loyal to someone you don't believe in. So, was that why you invited Ito to the Shinsengumi? Yeah. Ito is very in tune with politics, and he keeps up with the trends and has a lot of connections. I would have thought he might lead the troops in a good direction. Maybe if he hadn't been such a jerk. Well, at least better than now. Um, as any group knows, it must begin to accept people with differing viewpoints. Size and human nature simply decrees it cannot be tightly focused forever. So long as the Shinsengumi fought in the front lines of any war, it would lose friends to death. But how many might it lose, I wondered to differences of opinion. I did my best to put the thought from my mind. Enjoy the present, don't worry about the future. That was what I truly believed, and I quietly looked up at the starry sky. Well, was that easy? I really thought one of the demons would have come after us, but nope, okay. Since then, once the rest of the men returned, there was a meeting among the captains. The subject of that meeting was the three men at Nijo Castle, Shikage Kazuma, Kyuju Amagiri, and Kyo Shiranoi. They called themselves demons, and their previous encounters with the Shinsengumi suggested they were somehow involved with the Satsuma and Choshu. The Satsuma were the most powerful domain in the opposite domain, and the Choshu are publicly expressive of their descent toward the Shogunate. The Choshu are essentially enemies of the court. I don't know how the three men are supposedly affiliated with the domains, but... It was abundantly clear they are not to be dealt with carelessly. There was another problem, however. Why had they come for me? They said I was one of them, and knew about my family name and my kodachi. But how? My name is Chizuru Yukimura. I am the daughter of my father and my mother. I am a normal girl, nothing out of the ordinary. But who am I? They speak the truth.
June 1865. June 1864. Did we step back in time? The compound was alive with noise and movement. I passed several soldiers in the halls, each one of them excited about something. Oh boy, I know what this is. What was going on? <laughs> this is... this is unconscionable. Never in all my... Ito, is something wrong? Yes, yes, I'd say everything is wrong. Why should I be made to bear my skin in the same room as those... those savages? Ito's explanation was useless. I was completely confused. Um, is there something going on today? Ito did his best to collect himself, shakily adjusting his hair and clothing before he spoke. Someone claiming to be a doctor whom Kondo met on his visit to the Shogun has arrived. He is conducting physical examinations. With a disdainful sniff, he glared pointlessly across the hall, toward the area he just left. The men were getting physical checkups, that much I knew, given my particular situation. I'd been exempted by the captains, who also gave me special instructions to stay away. Then why am I here? That hairless monster, er, I mean, that doctor. He demanded I remove my clothing in front of everyone. When I refused, as any decent man would, he tried to remove them himself, by force. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's unusual. That's not something I would have expected. And the rest of them just, just stood there. What sort of uncultured savages are they? Savages seemed a bit strong. At any rate, perhaps I should just see what a physical entailed. I was a doctor's daughter, after all. You were told to stay away! What's this doctor's name? I believe he called himself Ryojun Matsumoto. What? Wait, Dr. Matsumoto? W what's up with that reaction? Do you know him? When I first came to Kyoto, my plan was to find Dr. Matsumoto. My father told me that I could rely on the man if I ever needed anything. Unfortunately, he was away on business when I'd arrived, and after that... I'm going to go watch the physical exams. There was no time to waste. Oh my, so you want to see those savages. What peculiar taste. <laughs> Takes all kinds. Is this it? I could hear loud voices from inside. Oh! Oh! The scene froze me in place. All right, next. <laughs> One of the best moments in the whole game. At last, it's my turn. Check this out, Doctor. <laughs> I can just see him flexing his pecs, you know. Hmm? Hmm? What do you think? You're looking at the amazing product of years of training. Your body's fine, Shin. I think it's your head the Doctor ought to be taking a look at. What's that? You say you want me to beat the daylights out of you? You're fine, Shinpachi Nagakura. Now get back. Next. Whoa, hold on there, Doc. You gotta get a good look at this. No, you're quite fine. Healthy as a horse. And I've seen quite enough. Thank you. <laughs> you're holding up the line, Shimpachi. Get moving, okay? Oh, I'm just saying, I don't really think you've had time to fully examine. Don't you want to order a slice of this beefcake? I've got two meaty servings on a plate right here. I think they added that line. I don't remember that line from before. A medical examination is for finding problems. Not showing off. Now move. Uh, it wasn't difficult to see why Ito was desperate to escape. I couldn't imagine him as part of such a display. <laughs> what should I do? I feel like it's rude to intrude. Yukimura, what are you doing here? Is something the matter? Oh, Yamazaki, hello. Um, I heard that Dr. Matsumoto was here. Yamazaki didn't look like he was in the mood to tolerate my snooping, so we went to the point. Hmm, I see. I take it you aim to speak with him, huh? I've been briefed on everything regarding your situation. I think I know what you're doing. However, the physicals are taking some time. Will you leave this to me? What should I do? Yes, please. Are you sure? Then yes, please do so. Got it. Please excuse me. What exactly is he doing? Yamazaki went over to Dr. Matsumoto. Pardon me, Dr. Matsumoto. Please allow me to look after those whose symptoms are minor. Why not take a little break? 
Oh, yeah, that's right, because he does have medical training. I forgot. Hmm, I'll take you up on that offer. I waited outside for Dr. Matsumoto until he stepped out of the examination room. Um, excuse me. Yes? He looked at me for a moment, his eyes narrowed in curiosity. Oh, I need to fetch some more medicine, so maybe it's a good time for a break. Can you give me a hand? Oh, y yes, of course. What luck? <laughs> That's not luck. I think I, he knows who you are. Um, Dr. Matsumoto. Oh, doctor. Hello, Yukimura. Oh, hi, Kondo. I see you found her already. Yes, thanks to you. What? I was utterly lost. Dr. Matsumoto laid a gentle hand on my shoulder. Chizuru, I came here to see you. Kondo told me that Koda's daughter was staying with the Shinsengumi. Oh, I see. I knew Kodo and Matsumoto were acquaintances. So, I thought perhaps Matsumoto might be able to give us a clue as to his friend's whereabouts. I looked him up as soon as he returned to Kyoto. The Shinsengumi had their own reasons for wanting my father found, but Dr. Matsumoto's appearance was still a cause for joy. Thank you, both of you. They smiled. Dr. Matsumoto then explained he had just barely missed me when he left for Edo as I came to Kyoto. He'd received all my letters, but once he finally returned, he had no idea where I was, and consequently couldn't find me. I'm sorry that I missed you. You must have had a rough time of it. Is there anything you need? No, I'm doing all right. So, Dr. Matsumoto, about my father. His face took on a grim cast, and before he even spoke, I knew what his response would be. Unfortunately, I know no more about where Kodo might be than you do. I... I see. The defeated tone of my voice surprised me. I suppose on some level, I believe Dr. Matsumoto had some miraculous revelation about my father. Foolish me, of course, but that didn't make the truth any less devastating. Kondo simply nodded. Oh, I hear you become involved with the... um... the treatment. You know what I mean, don't you? Kodo's experiments. Yes, I knew what he meant. The experiments my father conducted with some strange concoction that can make people go mad. Please, tell me about it. I want to know everything my father was doing. He nodded. Kodo was working with the Shinsengumi under orders from the Shogun to create what were called Furies. Furies are humans with high demonic strength and speed and phenomenal healing abilities. Furies? This term seems so familiar. Then I realized I'd overheard some of the men talking about it. Don't jinx him, Soji. It's gonna look bad if officers start joining the Furies. Oh, so Furies come from something you drink, where only injuries can be cured. The Furies that Heisuke spoke about are meant to be pitied. The substance that transforms normal men into these Furies is called the Water of Life. In China, they call it Senten. In short, it grants immortality. Furies, water of life. It sounded more like something from a fairy tale rather than real life. But there was something in Dr. Matsumoto's tone of voice that said he was telling the truth. And we'll hear more from Dr. Matsumoto in the next episode, because I think we're going to have to stop right there. Hope to see you in the next episode or some of my other ones, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me. And I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>